Buttermere is one of the lakes of the English Lake District, an area northwest of England carved out by the retreating Ice Age glaciers. The nearby village of Buttermere takes its name from the lake. Once in Cumberland, boundary changes now place the lake within the county of Cumbria. The typically verdant green fields surrounding much of the lake rise into steep black rock where Fleetwith and Haystacks tower over the water. Haystacks, a massive to the centre right of this painting, was the famous fell walker Alfred Wainwright's favourite fell. The lake provides a fine round the lake walk which is for the most part fairly level, yet the views are mountainous and, on a fine day, superb. With this painting I decided to use masking medium. For those not familiar with this product, it's essentially a tinted white or liquid latex which can be applied by brush to any area of a watercolour painting where the artist wishes to preserve the whiteness of the paper. It's an alternative to the use of opaque white gouache or to the more problematic method of painting carefully around the area to be avoided. Masking medium can be used with a toothbrush. Here you see a bottle of the medium, this particular one being Winter and Newton product, in a small case along with the brush I used to apply it, plus ceramic containers and the old toothbrush used for spattering the medium. The foreground was masked using scrap A4 sheets of paper laid loosely onto the painting with the board flat on the table. Masking medium was spattered by raking a piece of stiff card across the loaded toothbrush allowing the medium to fall only where the masking allowed. The size of the spatter is inherently random and a couple of large drops fell where they pleased. These could easily have been removed, but I left them in place to become, at a later stage, small rocks. To paint the simple sky, I wet the area with a large mop brush, then flooded in ultramarine with the slightest mix of Payne's grey. I covered right across the very top of the picture but stopped short where I judged the foliage areas would be placed. The edge of the painted area was diluted and blended into the white paper surface to avoid any hard edges as the paint dried. I like to place figures in paintings in order to add a sense of scale, so I quickly sketch in a couple of walkers standing with their backs to the artist and taking in the view across the lake to haystacks. A touch of masking medium was added to uh, be made later into areas where the low sunlight picks the figures out. The figures are shown here in their completed form and with quinacridone gold highlights where the masking medium was. Later modifications to the figures made them rather more solid in appearance. Masking on the trees and fence, uh, the medium was used for the bright highlights on the tree trunks and also on the picket style fencing to the extreme left. The medium is easy to use but it can be difficult to get exactly the coverage you need. Luckily it's an easy matter to remove as well once it's dried and can be reapplied perhaps with more success. Here you can see the spattered medium and two inadvertently large blobs that, as so often with watercolour paintings, turned out to be a useful, if unintentional, addition. Remember the spattering is done before the painting is applied. 
The finished gravel bank shows what happened after I rubbed off the medium and added colour and shadow to the rocks, plus additional spots of dark paint to create a bit of variegation. The medium's done its job well, I feel. Painting the haystacks. Here is shown the haystack mountain with the shaded areas painted with washes of mixtures of ultramarine and purple madder with darks of neutral tint wash. The lake edge was painted with purple mudder and afterwards, though not when this photograph was taken, I laid a strip of masking tape along the water's far edge and repainted to, clean, to get a clean line and protect the white area I wanted to keep pristine. The highlights on haystacks are painted with washes of quinacridone gold. The initial shadows for the tree trunk sides and the ground shadows beneath the trees were added using a mix of Prussian blue chrome orange, uh, a mix that makes of deep vibrant green, and lamp black. For the lakes and tree background, uh, with the water's edge now sharpened, the water itself was painted using varied mixes of ultramarine purple mudder and a touch of lemon yellow. The more distant trees behind the near trunks were indicated using a green mixed from lemon yellow and cobalt blue, and the mix used for tree shadowing was also used to add to the far distant trees along the water's edge. With the figures and lake completed, highlights were rubbed into the lake using a hard eraser of the type used in the past to correct typewriting errors. Again, this works with a majority of good 300 GSM watercolour papers, but I'd hesitate to try it with, say, thinner stock, or certainly not with cartridge. The latter could all too easily tear or rub through. Then the tree darks were improved and branch detail was added along with the shadow areas. I added shadowing and deep details to the lake edge as well along with hints of reflections in the lake. Finally foliage was painted with varying washes of mixed greens. Sections of the trunk were left unpainted to allow the foliage to flow across the trunk and obscure it and suddenly the picture is looking complete. But that's a bit of an illusion, there's still some detail needed. The main addition here are the two prominent clumps of grass along the gravel shore. Other slight touches were also made, branches and so on, but these are subtle and probably only to satisfy the eye of the artist, rather than for sounder reasons. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it.